Hello everyone. For several years, a woman had been having trouble getting a good night's sleep because she was afraid of burglars. One night, her husband heard a noise in the house, so he went downstairs to investigate. When he got there, he did find a burglar. Good morning, said the husband. I am pleased to see you. Come upstairs and meet my wife. She has been waiting for ten years to meet you. Friends, it is human nature to worry or to be anxious at times. What is worry? Worry means to be disturbed or preoccupied with cares and anxieties. There are many things which we are anxious about in life. Our worries are different because we are really anxious only for people and things we care about. Sometimes worrying can prevent bad things from happening. However, excessive worrying can kill our appetite, make us sick, ruin our relationships and steal our peace. The amazing thing about worry, and we know this from experience, is that only a few of the things we worry about ever happen. A study regarding worry reveals that 40% of things we worry about never happen. 30% of what we worry about has already happened and cannot be changed. 22% of what we worry about is beyond our control. Only 8% of what we worry about is in our control. So, while it seems to be useful in some way, it is very destructive to our mind, body, spirit and relationships. Early Christians were no exception. So St. Paul had to advise them on it. Let us discern first the circumstances surrounding this piece of advice from Paul. During his imprisonment in Rome and other places, Paul is believed to have written four letters which are included in the New Testament of the Bible. They are letters to the Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians and Philemon. Today's second reading is taken from the letter he wrote to encourage the Christians at Philippi in Macedonia, who were full of worries. First of all, they were worried about everyday concerns, such as health, relationships, children, money, job, security or the like. After they had become Christians, they also began to worry about their citizenship and church. As Roman citizens, they were exempt from paying certain taxes and were not subject to the authority of the provincial governor, but now they were being persecuted for their faith in Jesus Christ. Besides, they were also worried about the well-being of Paul in prison and Epaphroditus, a member of the church who was sent with the supplies to visit Paul and but became seriously ill and almost died while he was there. Hence, Paul exhorted the Philippians not to allow individual hardships, trials, anxieties and fear to discourage them and to hinder their perseverance in faith. He wrote, Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Paul did not simply tell the Philippians to stop worrying, but suggested a remedy for anxiety, prayer. In any and every situation, he asked them to bring their requests, their needs, their problems, their anxieties to God in prayer and leave them with gratitude in his hands and be blessed with the peace of God which surpasses all comprehension. In addition to all that has been said already, he said, Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. 
In other words, he encouraged them to think about good things and have noble thoughts and then put these virtues into practice following the example of Paul himself so that they might experience the fullness of God's peace in Christ. What is the message for us today? Friends, if anyone needed strength, courage and encouragement in the early church, it was Paul. From the time he was struck blind on the road to Damascus and then subsequently chose to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, he suffered very much. He was abandoned, beaten, stoned, flogged, exiled, imprisoned, shipwrecked, starved and finally beheaded. But he was selfless. He not only found joy and peace in his suffering, but also prayed for others to be strengthened and encouraged them to think and do virtuous and noble things, so that they will also experience the presence of the God of peace forever. We, living more than 2,000 years later, are fortunate to read his encouraging words. Paul is not so much talking about being anxious, something which we cannot avoid in life, but how we can deal with those moments when they come. He teaches us a fundamental truth about our Christian faith. No matter what our misfortune or difficulty, God reigns supreme and sovereign. He can and will see us through any adversity, persecution, affliction, hardship or disaster. If we pray in total submission and gratitude to God and think and do what is true, noble, right, pure, gracious and honorable, God will richly bless us with pardon, grace, peace and eternal happiness. What are the sort of things you worry about today and right now? Is it something of a major concern in your life or something small or insignificant? Do you exaggerate your worries and suffering? Do you attempt to take control of your life, relying only on your own wisdom and power, or do you let God take control of your life and follow His guidance? Do you speak good, think good, and or true, just, righteous, gracious, and praiseworthy? Let these questions and the words of St. Paul ring in your ears as you face the situations that make you worry and anxious. Amen. God bless you.